All right, so um, why don't we move on to item number 15. Capital Improvement Projects Annual Report for Fiscal Year 2015. Mr. Kelly. Good afternoon. Uh, Pat Kelly, Assistant Public Works, Works Director, City Engineer. And I am pleased to be here today to give you a snapshot of the city's capital program, uh, which involves just about all city funds and city departments. As a snapshot, not all the projects are going to be shown. However, it's intended to give you a good idea of what we're up to as far as design, construction, design and construction regarding the city's significant infrastructure. The presentation mostly focuses on the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. I have a lot of information about that, but also uh, cover the whole year. And then at the end, I uh, have a video from City TV uh, regarding the work on Lower State Street. So I think you've seen this before, and I think that uh, it's really difficult to see, so I apologize for that. But it shows the location and color of all the different projects that we've had around town. And just for your information, we do have a website on the Engineering Division uh, website for Public Works that you can go to and see um, this information in detail. So for the fourth quarter, um, talk about... Um, Six completed projects, Lower Mission Creek uh, and Punta Gorda, uh, Lower Sycamore Creek. Uh, we'll be talking about Lower Mission Creek in a minute. Uh, and Punta Gorda, um, some work around the um, Morton Bay fig tree that is associated with some uh, work on the Lower Mission Creek project. And then some work at um, our wastewater treatment plant, some pavement maintenance, a, a new well, and then some uh, significant um, sewer maintenance. So here's one of the highlights of what I want to talk about today, and it's regarding the Lower, Mission, Lower Sycamore Creek at Punta Gorda. And this project, Lord, um, replaced the Punta Gorda uh, Street Bridge as well as widening the creek there between Punta Gorda and the freeway. And what you see here is a picture of the old, very narrow bridge, I think just at 20 feet. Now we have a much wider a new bridge as you look down towards um, the freeway and what you see here is an adjacent trailer park and in order to get this project moving forward there is a significant amount of preparation uh, to get it moving forward and you may recall that at one time we came to the council and uh, this trailer park had a 30-foot encroachment permit into um, the right-of-way from which we were able um, where the creek was and so um, after a significant amount of effort that um, permit was terminated. We worked uh, carefully with the um, trailer park and the result was is that there is a significant reorganization within the park and there was some loss of some units. However, we were able uh, to work with them and the fire department to uh, redesign uh, the internal circulation and also be able to restore uh, access off of Punta Gorda, which was a significant uh, question that ha they had had. Now, I think what's really important about this project is that um, this neighborhood flooded twice in 1995. Most people are familiar with the January 10th flood uh, that came along Mission Creek. But a lot of people don't realize that on March 10th, this neighborhood flooded again almost as severely. And as such is that this is an important first step to reduce the probability of flooding in this neighborhood. Uh, a key effort was by Caltrans as part of the... Um, 101 operational improvements. Um, they significantly widened the bridge underneath the freeway, but they didn't open all the um, elements of that of that bridge. So they significantly increased the capacity, but they're, they still um, reduced the potential capacity by, by about one third. And so I just wanted to let you know is that we are um, moving forward with some studies to figure out what it's gonna take to get Caltrans uh, what information they need in order to um, move forward with that work because um, they didn't open up the outer bays because they're uh, 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 feared downstream flooding. And so what we want to show is the consequences of upstream flooding versus uh, downstream flooding. Uh, before I move on, just this project had some uh, very interesting key features. One was a, a very tall Southern California Edison transmission pole that needed to be uh, relocated. 
And because of working with, Cal with uh, Edison, there were some delays. And in fact, we have a claim that is in progress with Edison regarding that. Constructing a new modern uh, sewer siphon and also placing, um, repairing bank protection along with habitat planting. And over time, um, these willows, uh, there are some sycamores in there, and over time, um, the sycamores will be seen rather than uh, it'll be more look like a creek. Here's uh, some of the routine work that we do around town, and that's the slurry seal. Um, it's um, last year we had a million dollar um, award. Uh, just today, you awarded a, another contract uh, for slurry seal for zone two. Um, the zone one of which this um, completed work was is for the east side and the lower Riviera. The work that you awarded today was for the Upper State Street and San Roque neighborhoods. And we're moving away from the slurry seal uh, and doing more resurfacing, as I believe was explained in the Council Agenda Report. Here is the, um, the picture of our uh, completed uh, well. Um, this is the old uh, well um, site. And this is uh, our new well, and um, we're in the process of um, completing the landscaping and then also putting up protection around here. So hopefully to landscape it and, and hide this production well. It'll be about 420 um, gallons per minute, and that is scheduled to be uh, completed um, by Halloween. So we also have a significant amount of construction in progress. As a matter of fact, 18 existing contracts, large and small, uh, valued at about $45 million. And I'll be showing you some of the larger ones, more interesting ones. And again, as um, I noted earlier, is that you can go on the city's uh, Public Works Engineering um, website interactive map. We're kind of proud of that. Uh, that you can go in and see the location of projects under design and construction. Here's uh, Cabrillo Boulevard. This is going to be another feature, is that um, in July, the contractor completed the mountainside uh, demolition of the bridge and started construction of the new bridge in the upstream banks. This summer, a temporary pedestrian bridge will be installed on the beach side to accommodate the next construction phase, phase when traffic is moved over to the north side of the completed new bridge while the south side is being demolished and replaced as planned. The finished project includes some restoration of the um, Mission Creek Lagoon per the Lagoon Master Plan that was developed as part of the Lower Mission Creek project approvals. The project is scheduled to be completed by the end of 2016. And I must say I want to uh, express appreciation for people's patience with the reduction of four lanes to two and the Stearns Wharf detouring during the construction period. I just want to point out that personally, last Sunday afternoon while driving on Cabrillo Boulevard, I didn't find the detour and lane reductions much of a problem. The Coda Street Bridge um, is a, a key project of the Lower Mission Creek project, and it is moving along quite well. The existing bridge has been demolished, and all the debris has been removed, and the um, bridge abutment piles have just been completed, and the contractor is moving forward um, with that work. The, uh, the new width of the channel uh, with the placement of the new abutments will accommodate the added flow of the or Mission Creek project. In the next two months, the contractor will be finishing the construction of the bridge abutments, channel banks, and some of the walls, and the creek bed, which includes some fish passage features. They are planning to be out of the creek by October and finish the bridge deck, roadway approaches, and landscaping by January. This project is 88% funded and is on track to be completed by the end of this year. Mason Street is another bridge that's part of the Lower Mission Creek project. And uh, this one is quite fascinating from the perspective that we've done a lot of uh, coordination with our flood control district. Significant progress has been made to date as the contractor has completed the installation of the abutments and walls on the easterly side of the creek. And the creek has been significantly widened, almost uh, doubled at this location. And now the water is being uh, routed uh, on the side of the creek where the construction was just completed. Mr. Some Kelly, forgive me, is that a recent picture? Last few weeks, you think? No, no, it's a little bit older than that. Okay, thank you. It's a very photogenic site, I just want to say. Um, 
I've talked about uh, the big construction down there, and I encourage everybody to check out that site and also Cabrillo. Um, some of the channel wall construction adjacent to the bridge was financed uh, through a cost sharing agreement that we brought here to council with uh, the county flood control district. The flood control district used the assessment fees that you see uh, when you get your property tax bill. The county has taken advantage of the city's bridge construction and has awarded a separate wall, uh, channel wall construction and is extending the walls of the Lower Mission Creek project. Once these projects are completed, the county only has a short uh, channel section just southerly of the railroad tracks and a diversion where north of the freeway to, in order to double the capacity of um, Mission Creek, which is in line with the Lower Mission Creek project from about 1,500 cubic feet per second to over uh, 3,400. This will go a long way to reduce the severity of floods such as we experienced in January 1995, most people are familiar with. But a lot of people aren't familiar with that uh, the, the flooding of the depot in, 98, several in 1998 and also in 2005 and several other occasions. And so this project will um, reduce and eliminate much of that uh, inconvenience. And the project is on schedule to be completed in the early half of 2016. And here's one of the city's um, permeable paper projects. This one is being managed by facilities. Creeks has got funding for several other projects around town. In fact, we have another one that is going along at Veracruz Alley and also that goes around the uh, Chase, rather the Alice Keck uh, Memorial Gardens. This is grant funding and it replaces the asphalt paving and permeable pavers at the, the city owned lots next to the uh, parks and recreation and facilities offices off, uh, off Laguna. Um, it was awarded in um, June 2015 and is expected to be completed by the end of this year. Here's a little follow up of the Alameda well uh, replacement after the well was drilled. Um, in between uh, park uh, activities, between uh, summer solstice and fiesta, snuck in there and did some of the electrical work and some additional piping, um, and also uh, did much of the landscaping in preparation for the city's water resource crews to install the submersible pump that we anticipate to uh, have ready in the next month or so. So, um, we have a significant amount of work in design also, but before I move there, I wanted to describe um, a maintenance event that we had um, in town. Uh, not quite the uh, uh, event that uh, Jill described down at the um, bird refuge, but here's an example of some of the uh, hidden infrastructure that we have. You know, we're familiar with seeing the uh, pavement um, resurfacing projects and the potholes. But here's an example of something that the uh, public will be experiencing too more often is that um, we have an old infrastructure of our traffic signals. And so um, these are some of the things that we're finding, just corroded old um, projects of, of conduits that sometimes create the signals to go down and on flash. And so we'll see that more and more often. And um, a little metaphor I'd worked up um, mm -hmm. was that um, as I am retiring, um, I'm getting an opportunity to play more golf. And I had an experience recently that you have to really look at the expiration date on some of these things, on, on the suntan lotion that you use. And much in the same way that we have expiration dates on some of our infrastructure, that, that if you don't look at the expiration date of your suntan lotion when you're going out and playing golf, you can get a really bad burn. And so, um, and, be, and it'd be a significant inconvenience. It's a bit of a weak one, but you know, it is my last meeting. So I can, I figure I can maybe pull off this. No more, uh, hopefully no more jokes. Let's be clear, you're not expiring. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so here is a very interesting project that we, uh, one of the many interesting projects we have in town, and this is um, in design, and it is the Las Positas Cliff Drive intersection, where we're planning a roundabout, and it's about 50% funded uh, by grants and the rest by the city. And it will do a significant amount of improvements to reduce queuing at the intersection and also be a great gateway to the city, which I think is a significant justification for the city's participation. 
And it is being uh, coordinated with the, uh, another grant uh, project that the city is working on uh, regarding the Las Positas Modoc Multipurpose Pathway Project. Here's a lot of the uh, routine maintenance that uh, we don't get to see. And this is the, uh, at the El Estero treatment plant. It's a significant effort, as you can see, um, over $21 million to improve the uh, treatment of our effluent into the ocean, be more efficient and um, more water wise. This construction is uh, scheduled to start in early 2016. Here's a pie chart of the work that we've done, uh, completed work. Um, in attachment two of the Council of Gin report uh, has some additional detail. For uh, the fiscal year, for this fiscal year, uh, we completed $27 million of construction, and about five and a half of that was provided through grant funding. Much of the other work, as you can see, uh, water, wastewater, that's an enterprise and self-funded as long as with waterfront and airport uh, and downtown. And then here's um, uh, some work left over from the successor agency. And we really don't have any uh, general fund construction this fiscal year. And here's the, the graph that you've seen many times, and it shows um, the completed work that we've had um, over the years. This last year is 27. We project $40 million next year. And that's about an average of $49 million in the last five and 43 over the last 10. And going back to 1993, when I started, is that over $600 million of work has been completed. And when you look at, you know, many of the uh, Office of uh, Governmental um, Information, they talk about a multiplier of um, public works construction to jobs and uh, gross domestic product of local agencies. So by um, our, our water rates, wastewater rates, and the grants we've been doing is that we have uh, the city's capital program not only has been maintaining the infrastructure for service to the public, but also um, maintaining some economic benefit to the community. And before I move on to the, the video, I'd just like to say, as I've noted, this is my last CIP presentation. I'm retiring after 22 years with the city. And, and that's after 42 years as being um, a, an engineer. It has been a privilege uh, to work in uh, Santa Barbara for the public and for the many councils that I've worked with and council members. We have a significant, um, very polished and professional leadership here in the city. And I'm glad that um, I am going to be able to remain in the city and live here. And I look forward to seeing uh, you and uh, the successors to you and my successor to continue to improve and make this a uh, beautiful place to live. So thank you very much. And with that, I think this will get going. If you've been down to the waterfront recently, you've noticed a lot of construction in the lower State Street area. The projects range from city public work CIP projects to private land development projects. The city staff through the land development team has coordinated construction schedules in order to minimize the impact on residents, visitors, and businesses. The city's land development team is comprised of members from the Public Works Department, Community Development Department, the Fire Department, and other divisions within the city. Significant amount of coordination is required for these public and private projects. Um, every individual project has its own schedule and impacts to the road and the public right-of-way. So it is a task to coordinate all these, these individual projects, but in the scheme of things so that we have a good coordination in the overall scheduling of these projects so that traffic control can be coordinated. And that's one of the most significant issues that we have to deal with is the coordination and the use of the public right-of-way with traffic control so that uh, individual projects can succeed, but the general public can succeed in getting around during the construction of this Lower State Street impact area. The construction area is between Cabrillo Boulevard, Yananali Street, Anacapa Street, and Lower Mission Creek. In my 24-year career with the city, this is the highest impact of an area that I've seen. So it's a significant event, and it's going to be uh, amazing when it's all completed. And the very good part of all this is that a lot of these projects are within a general same time frame. 
Currently, the public works projects include two Mission Creek bridge replacements, one on Cabrillo Boulevard and the other on Mason Street, and a two-phase Lower Mission Creek flood control channel improvement project. These projects are scheduled to be finished in 2016. Our bridge projects are replacing very old bridges that were considered structurally deficient. So we are providing improvements for the future. And as part of those improvements to the structural capacity of the bridge, we're also in coordination with our Historic Landmarks Commission providing other aesthetic improvements. And the bottom line is that to provide a, a more safe and beautiful Santa Barbara. The Cabrillo Bridge project, which started in 2014, is in stage two of construction. During this stage, the north side of the bridge will undergo foundation work and repairs to the creek walls. A temporary pedestrian bridge will be constructed to allow easy access for cyclists and pedestrians to enjoy the beautiful waterfront. One of the biggest challenges with all these projects in the same vicinity is getting the traffic control plans to coincide and the timing of the traffic control plans and the use of the public right-of-way, be it sidewalk closures or lane closures or street closures. We're trying to minimize the impact to the public while meet the needs of the individual projects. We have a detour um, on Yananali Street. We encourage people that are getting off the Garden Street Freeway if they want to go to Stearns Wharf or they want to go to West Beach or they want to go to the harbor uh, or downtown to turn uh, right on Yananali and then to turn left onto State Street and come down here to the beach and avoid the, the bottleneck. Cabrillo Boulevard is a primary arterial. It's also the, the primary beach access of the waterfront. So um, Public Works identified that early in this project, and that's how we came up with the staging for this project. So we're maintaining one lane in each direction uh, during construction for, for vehicle traffic. We also have bike access and pedestrian access. In addition to the public works projects, there are numerous private projects that include the Entrada de Santa Barbara, the Museum of Exploration and Innovation, the 101 State Street Hotel, and the Sonos Office Building. The largest of them is the Entrada project. It's a hotel project and it's going to be occupying three of the four corners of State and Mason Streets. And part of the project will be a brand new parking garage available to the public. In addition to these projects that are all underway, there are also a couple of future projects, such as the Anacapa Cabrillo intersection improvements and improvements at the railroad crossing near the train station. The city recently received grant funding from the California Public Utilities Commission for improvements at the railroad crossing related to pedestrian and uh, safety features. And so that work will be towards the end of the Entrada project, and uh, we're looking forward to those improvements as these are 100% grant funds for public benefit and safety. The Anacapa intersection project is part of a highway safety improvement program grant fund, and it will be coordinated with our Cabrillo bridge replacement project, and it will be scheduled to coincide with the bridge construction. So the, from the public's perspective, it'll appear to be uh, one project. Everything is still happening down here, from the parks, the arts and craft show, uh, the businesses on Lower State Street, uh, Helena Avenue, Anacapa, Mason Street, everybody's open. Uh, we've been working with them on uh, business open signs um, and just general public information about the different businesses. So come down here, just plan ahead. Um, any questions? I don't see any public comment uh, speaker slips, but um, first off, just want to thank you for 22 years of service with the city. And I can't remember if it was 2006 or 2007 when we went to the Coastal Commission meeting for the um, for the Coastal Development Permit for all the uh, the Lower Mission Creek project. And you said then, well, when those bridges get replaced, that's when I'm retiring. So. <laughs> Guess what? Um, so it's it's uh, great that those things are coinciding, and just uh, I know that that has been in particular something that you've been interested in. Not to mention all the other uh, amazing, would you say, six hundred million dollars worth of public works. You spend a lot of money uh, for the city. Thank you, and we hope when you're playing golf, will be at Muni, and uh, lots of rounds at the municipal golf course. But um, we really do appreciate your longtime service and uh, commitment to the city of Santa Barbara. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Rouse? Uh, can I still uh, call your cell phone when they do unscheduled maintenance in front of my business pad? 
Anytime. Yeah. I'm on, I think I'm on your speed dial, aren't I? There you go. There you go. Well, we appreciate this, and we know you're, we're going to have a great time to celebrate, I think, next week, right? Yes, indeed. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So the